this video we'll be covering how to resolve certificate errors on the Firebox using the Firebox's built-in certificate authority. So this is one common scenario you'll see when you're going to the Firebox management web UI, for example. The web browser will tell you that the certificate authority is invalid, but it's actually a little bit more than that. If we take a look at the certificate itself, you'll notice here that the Firebox is the issuer, but when we go to the path, there's actually no domain or address information listed in here anywhere. And this is definitely not what I typed into the web browser. And if I look at the details, there is also no subject alternative name information in the certificate. So there's also no way to match that against anything you've typed here. I've opened up the Firebox system manager, I went to view certificates, or you can just click this icon right here. It'll open up this menu. The certificate that we just looked at a moment ago in the web browser is this one right here. And it is marked with the asterisk that denotes that it is the currently active Firebox web server certificate. So this certificate is the one that is operating all HTTPS pages on the Firebox. And that can include many things such as the management web UI, the SSL VPN download page, the access portal, and the authentication portal on port 4100. The certificate is also used for WSM management connections to the Firebox. It runs a lot of different things, but as I just showed you in the web browser, the certificate does not have any valid domain here. The common name is just some words, not in a domain format, and the subject alternative name is blank. There are two ways to address this. One way is to import a legitimate third-party signed web server certificate. You can purchase one from a known public authority. You can get one signed by your local certificate authority. Or you can go with the alternative, which is to use the Firebox's built-in certificate authority. When you do this, you'll be able to create a certificate with valid address information in it. However, that certificate will still not be trusted by the computer because the Firebox's certificate authority signed it, not a public trusted authority. I will be using Policy Manager to make these changes, but you can do the same thing in the web UI. The reason I'm using Policy Manager for certificate stuff is because I will not be kicked out of the appliance completely, whereas if I were to make this change in the web UI, the connection would drop and I would have to reload the page and log back in. You will notice a momentary disconnect in WSM when the certificate is changed, but it just reconnects and you're not kicked out of any applications. Go to Setup, Certificates, and then the Firebox Web Server Certificate tab. And this is where I can choose which certificate I want to use to resolve the certificate error. As I mentioned earlier, the default certificate will always throw a certificate error no matter what. There's no way around it because it doesn't have that valid domain information. If I import a third-party web server certificate, which I would highly recommend, you would select that from the drop-down list here once it's imported. Please see the Firebox certificate import video to learn more about that process. In this case, I will be using the custom certificate signed by the Firebox. So this will use the built-in CA. I'll need to fill out the common name and organization name information. And I'll leave the organizational unit blank. It's totally optional. And then these two buttons right here control the subject alternative name information. So I will have to fill those out since modern web browsers check these things. I've added a domain here. And if I will be accessing the Firebox via an IP address versus a locally resolvable domain, then I can put in the IP address here that I'm using for that Firebox. I put a couple different IP addresses in here. You really just need to think about which Firebox interfaces you will be accessing the device from and put in those IPs. Again, it's whatever you will be typing into your web browser that must be included in the certificate. So I'll hit OK, and then I will go ahead and save these changes to the Firebox. And there we go. Now that that's saved, I can go and check out the certificates here. And once I hit refresh, you'll notice that the 
signed certificate for the Firebox web server has been updated to include the domain information. If I click details, you will see there is in fact subject alternative name information as well. Back over here in the web browser, tried reconnecting to the Firebox's management web UI. If I look at the certificate, you will see that the domain information is updated right here. If I look at the details, the browser is seeing the subject alternative name. So, as I mentioned earlier, it is still expected to see a certificate warning at this point because the certificate authority is the Firebox itself, and the computer doesn't trust that as a valid CA. So what we need to do is grab a copy of this certificate. Right here, we can grab a copy, and you can download this in whatever format you want, honestly, because this is just going to be installed on the computer, so it comes down to whatever kind of endpoint you have. Windows will accept either DER or Base64. So I browse to the desktop, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. And there we go. The export was successful. So on my desktop here, I have the certificate. Just double click on it, and there's the install certificate button. And it's up to you whether you want to do it for the specific user or the machine. If you want it for all users, just choose local machine. And then in here, you will need to choose to place it into a specific certificate store. The automatic option will not work most of the time. We need to place this into the Trusted Root Certification Authority store. And then finish the wizard. Once that is successful, we can test the website again. I've relaunched my browser, since that'll be required for almost any web browser to reread the operating system certificate store. So I'll go ahead and reconnect to the Firebox on the web UI port 8080. And there we go. The website now loads without any certificate errors or warnings. And if I look at the certificate, you can see it's that same exact one I just created. And it is now considered an OK certificate. It is still recommended to go with a third-party web server certificate since you would not need to import that onto any computers to resolve this web server certificate issue. But this option obviously doesn't involve any other costs or a third-party or anything, so it's pretty straightforward. Just to recap, the default Firebox web server certificate will always throw certificate errors in your browser because it's missing that key information and it is not signed by a trusted CA. So you can resolve this by replacing it with a third-party certificate, and that is one that you can obtain either from a public CA or a local CA, or you can use a Firebox signed certificate. If you do choose to use the Firebox signed certificate, you will need to import that onto client machines in order for that certificate to be trusted. You must import that certificate into the Trusted Root Certification Authority store. Otherwise, the browser will not recognize it. For more information on Firebox certificates, please use the WatchGuard technical search.